The following are excerpts from some remarks on the term Aztec Empire by Arlach Barlow, originally published in the Americas, Volume 1, Number 3, January 1945. The Traditional Term The enormous native state which Cortes overthrew, August 13, 1521, is commonly called the Aztec Empire. This is true more of the English literature than of the Spanish, which prefers the half-correct Imperio de los Mexicanos. The writer has no quarrel with the word empire, which has been questioned from time to time, but he does have with the word Aztec, as used in this context, or in this connection. This originates, apparently, with Clavijero, and was diffused by Prescott a mere hundred years later. The latter speaks initially of the ancient Mexicans, or Aztecs, as they were called, and after that uses Aztec empire incessantly. This nomenclature, vulgarized through such dross as Bancroft, has swamped everything else. Nevertheless, Cortes, neither Cortes, nor Bernal Diaz, nor Tapia, all actors in the conquest, ever so much mention the word Aztec, much less say, we conquered the Aztec Empire. Nor does Sahugan in his encyclopedic work use the term Aztec Empire, nor does Motelieni, uh, if it appears in any of these works, or anywhere among the first generation of conquerors and settlers, it is so subordinately mentioned that it has ex escaped the writer. Below we shall see what its conquerors did call the empire they overthrew. The Azteca become Mexica. In spite of what has been said, the word Aztec has a meaning and a place in the ancient history of the Republic of Mexico. In the codices Auburn and Bujarini, in such prose documents as the Historia and the Annales, uh, you'll have to read the text to get those exact titles, and even such a late source as Torquemada, we get over and over again the story that some people living in a town called Aztlan, which was in a lake, where, is of no concern to us here, left this town and passed through a settlement called Teo Calhuacan, Old Calhuacan, or Divine Calhuacan. Here they acquire the dot god, and you'll have to bear with me as far as the pronunciation, Huitzilopochtli. And after coming into brief contact with eight other tribes, they were told by this god that they were the chosen people and must journey on alone, which they did. At this time, this god orders them to change their name, which was Aztlanica, and call themselves thereafter Mexica. In both the Codex Aben and Torquemada, this change of name is accompanied by a gift of a bow and arrow, and with this episode, the name Azteca becomes obsolete. What led Clavijaro to resurrect it is not apparent. The Eight Tribes Neither the future Mexica nor the Calhua are included among the eight tribes which sidle in and out of the migration story. There is a sort of norm for the names included in these eight tribes in the versions given by the codices Auburn and Bodorini and the unpublished Relashan. Seller, who has comments on the first two documents and their standard names, though other, often less reliable, documents name other tribes, this auburn Budarini. Chimalpahan version is probably standard for the Valley of Mexico and does not include the Kalhua. The Kalhua. The Kalhua or Kulua or Kolhua, etc., the people of Teo Kahuacan, seem to have been unsettled by the passing through their domain of the Azteca who become the Mexica. They are said by the Historia and by the Codex Aben to have undertaken a similar migration at the same time. Then they disappear and are already in the Valley of Mexico when the Mexica arrive, according to many sources. These Calhua were settled south of the city of Mexico in modern Calhuacan, which was named in remembrance of their old home. As the Historia explains, Ixtililzjokilil, Again, apologize for the pronunciation that you'll find in this reading, but you can go back and look up these names yourself. Remarks significantly that Calhua is a name for the survivors of the wrecked empire of Tula. Now, a very intimate relationship is indicated between the Calhua and the Mexica, and this will explain the name proposed below in place of Aztec Empire. Motiliani 
places the arrival of the Colhua before that of the Mexica, but he adds that some claim them to be identical. This claim that the Colhua and the Mexica are the same people is echoed by the Extilachacretl, um, also cited in the Historia, when he speaks of trouble between the Mexica and these lost Colhuas. And he says a couple more things in Spanish, which you can read in this article. Finally, the relation of a town which lay outside of the influence of these Mexica and or Calhua, which was part of the Texcoco Chalco sphere, tells us how the matter looked to previous people of the valley. It chronicles the arrival of stranger Indians who introduced the Huitzit, the Apocalypse cult, and lumps them together repeatedly as Calhua and Mexica, who are now Mexicans. There was little, if any, difference between Calhua and Mexica in the eyes of the early valley people. There is still more evidence from native genealogies and from the conquerors themselves. After the Mexica had settled on the island Mexico, the chroniclers of the southern half, Tenochtitlan, readily admitted their linkage with a new Calhuacan, just as those of the northern half, Tlactel tell local, link themselves with the Tepaneca. These two spheres of influence probably account for the long-sustained division of the small island into two city-states which must have begun as appendages of rival ma masters and carried on the feud later out of habit. The newly arrived southern Mexica lived in New Culhuacan on lands of hers, Tizapan, for some while and even built a temple there. When they moved out to the inlet to the islet, Mexico, they received their first Taltoiani from Calhuacan, Akamenapulti II, who was the grandson um, of the Kachik of Calhuacan. So they received their first leader, their first important individual of some sort, which was a relation to the Calhuacan. This is all freely admitted. And maybe significant also that it was to the Hill of the Star, near Cal New Calhuacan, that the Mexica went every 52 years to herald in the new century. The strongest identification of the Mexica with the Calhua, however, comes from the conquistadors. There was no doubt in their minds what to call Montezuma's people. Bernal Diaz, before the expedition of Cortes, saw the Indians of Tabasco point inland toward the, va the source of their gold and cried, Calhua! Kalua and Mexico, Mexico, we get this gold, they said in effect, from the tribe called Kalua, who live in the place called Mexico. It was not long until he knew what they meant, as he sets forth explicitly. Kalua, he says, has a linguistic meaning, but he broadens this to the political definition of all the regions subject to Mexico City, which is precisely what Cortez says. Throughout his letters, he speaks of the La de Kalua, um, que San Lo de Montezuma, rather than calling them the Mexica, he clarifies this by telling how he tells a little bit of a story. Cortez's father, in letters to the emperor, speaks of how his son conquered not the picture calendar as tax, but the land of the Kalua. And what is the name of the great fortress in the harbor where the Spaniards first settled? San Juan de Kalua. What can we make of this but that in the final wave of nomads to enter the Valley of Mexico, a tribe, Toltec survivors, called the Kalua, entered first, and then was followed by a group of stragglers, where and why they had lingered is not our business here, though a tempting theme, which was called the Kalua Mexica, perhaps. This tribe, which rose to dominate an enormous area, clearly retained its name up to the arrival of the Spanish and had forgotten its earlier name of Aztecs as completely as we shall have to forget it. Then what we are to call the empire as it stood, what, we, what are we to call the empire as it stood in 1519? By that date, it was the dwellers of the island of Mexico who dominated. The Tlalpan and the Texcoco had been cut to a mere carrying of spears, so that the Imperio de la Cabezas is no longer fitting. The term Aztec empire must be discarded. Mexican empire, a half-truth more current in the Spanish literature, is inconvenient um, because of the homonyms. The writer can only helplessly propose a restoration of the more complete original terminology, the empire of the Kalua Mexica.